Uh, dear friends, uh, in the first video, we discussed about the theoretical aspects of uh, challenging the constitutional validity or virus of legislations. Today, we are going to talk about the practical issues. I would like to share my experience uh, on the strategies, how we argued. And uh, I have filed uh, almost uh, uh, writ petition 9132, and that was challenging the virus of uh, Regulation 7. And then we challenged the 13 to 29 of 20. It is Regulation 7A, read with uh, bylaws 12A5. Then I challenged uh, another uh, virus of the legislation, 16 650 writ petition of uh, 2020. Then another legislation virus 8170 of 21 and 14458 of 21 uh, legislations have been tested and review petition also I filed and all. So what is the experience I've got, theoretical experience as well as the practical experience? Uh, uh, this is very important. Strategy preparation. And then what will be the likely outcome? And uh, what is the subject uh, main point we should focus on? All those things I would like to explain. I learned it by uh, myself and uh, over a period of time. Because first point is <clears throat> when you are challenging the virus of a legislation, that is it is an act of parliament Either it is the parliament, the main act, or by a subordinate legislation, through a subordinate legislation, we are going to challenge. You understand, it's finally an act of parliament. And you know, in doctrine of separation of powers, the judiciary is only through the process of interpretation. Interpretation is the job. And uh, the act of parliament, when the judiciary wants to quash it, then you need to convince the court beyond all reasonable doubts. Because they would not like to. The jurisprudence of uh, uh, these uh, challenging the virus of the legislation or notification or anything is why should the courts enter is what is the uh, thinking of the judiciary will be. And you, you have to make it work unless, unless you are able to establish that the legislature is in violation of uh, fundamental rights, violation of principles of natural justice, and more importantly, arbitrariness, manifestly arbitrary and substantive unreasonableness, the legislation. And you should convince the court. Very difficult, very difficult. You will always lose this case. Uh, case that you are filing. <clears throat> it should be, pre preparation should be extremely good. But the basic subject in any challenge will be one or two points will be there. Now this, uh, all these uh, repetitions, you can see they are there in the IBBA website because all the legislative things were dismissed by the Madras High Court. And uh, therefore, uh, the IBBI, Insolvency Bankruptcy Board of India, working under a statutory body, working under the subordinate legislation, would like to show it, yes, see, our, uh, uh, these things are all are up to, upheld by the Madras High Court. Even uh, Honorable Division Bench of Bombay High Court, based on the judgment delivered by Madras High Court in my case, dismissed the another uh, similar case by filed by my friend, uh, one Mr. Pratik Sarkar. Now we are challenging everything in the Supreme Court. So rule number one, my, my friends, is whenever you are challenging the virus of the legislation, you should be convinced there is a case made out. Secondly, you have to be prepared for uh, Supreme Court. You should not be, you will not get a redressal in the High Court. 95, 95% it will be dismissed. Point number one. So we are moving with this background. 
So challenging the virus of legislation as a lawyer, I know we, uh, since I am a party in person, this is an opportunity. But otherwise, this case will be argued by the senior counsels, highly experienced, brilliant judge, uh, uh, counsels will come and then present their case. I will share with you uh, how will how you can learn because that keeps you extremely fit uh, in knowledge because we have to learn by. Because even in advocacy professions, so over 35 subjects are there. We cannot read all. But during the process of practice, only one can learn. So I am making an effort to share uh, those experiences, which may be of great help to uh, the young students, young lawyers. So first step is legal strategy. We are preparing the legal strategy. Just like that, you cannot take up and then fight the cases. You should be convinced. So what I do is, <clears throat> in my case, what happened is this. Uh, the Regulation 7A. It has been introduced by Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board in 2020. And uh, what is that say regulation? Read with bylaw. 12A5. 12A bylaws. Here there is a, a requirement that every member of IDBI has to every year renew the membership. That is the effect. Every year you have to renew. And if they don't uh, renew that, for that year it will be rejected. You cannot accept any assignments. A very, very unusual thing. Who is an insolvency professional? Insolvency professional, how you can become an insolvency professional, friends? You all know that. Chartered accountant, cost accountant, company secretary, an advocate, and a manager with 10 years or more experience. These are the people who are eligible first. They should write an exam. And then you will fail, fail, fail. Because of the mistakes of the exam, not because of you, their answers, some of more majority, and then you will pass. Thereafter, you have to undergo some training and classes will be conducted. Police will come and check all those antecedents, everything they will see. And then they will give you membership. After getting this membership, you are asked to again renew it. This is the subject. Again, you are not only, it is, it's called as a twin tire architecture. You are not only a member of IBBI, you should also be a member of uh, IIPA, that's called as Institute of Chartered Accountants of India means they have a section 8 company and you are going to be a member of that. You should be a chartered accountant. So you can parallelly practice as chartered accountant or also practice as a, a insolvency professional. Fine. The Section 8 company is formed, a bylaws. This is given. That is, it's a subordinate legislation. And this is no act of parliament. IBBI is a statutory body established in the act of parliament. Whereas this IIPA is not so. It is only a Section 8 company of ICI. And uh, that is one thing. So, in my case, I am an affected party that I will come and uh, to explain you. But the question before, even otherwise, I would have challenged that. Uh, but since I am affected party, I was more concerned and uh, I have challenged that. What is my grievance? Basic grievance. Every case, there will be some small main point will be there. Remember that. In any case we are fighting, that case will be tilted only because of one or two points. And uh, you know, in, even in life, at the end of 60 years, you will realize if you are in troubles it is, or you are peaceful, it is because of your anger control or not control. That's it. 
the persons who never had anger or they are better management of anger anger and uh, they are peaceful those people who are in troubles are because of their anger all the time they become mood off and then they react attack people then it will come back similarly the legislation also when you are challenging some crux will be there so the question is what is that crux in this writ petition uh is coming to uh, 13 to 29 first i learned not at the time when i filed the for for me what happened i filed many uh, petitions almost 10 petitions uh, challenge the virus many i won and uh, many i lost 50% uh, result let us put it like this but uh, whenever i am convinced on one point or sometimes i have to file it and that also there but the other side the lawyers they will prepare their own defense who is going to appear before you against you is solicitor general additional solicitor general there are two advantages advantages and disadvantages i have observed this is my observation they are extremely knowledgeable and uh, suppose uh, a person like uh, Advocate General, uh, he never appeared because ASG only will appear. But I'm telling you, equal, they are extremely knowledgeable and then they are very polished. They deal with the law as well. But generally, we find that the Advocate General will be, Solicitor General will be handling so many cases in a day, so many cases. That means they are unprepared. They are not well prepared. I mean, they may, their knowledge is there, but not on the subject. Factually, things and the issues that are concerned. They will also pick up one point and then attack you. This is one thing we observe. But the second point is, the Solicitor General will be daily talking to the Chief Justice. Chief Justice uh, Court only will come. Honorable Chief Justice Bench only, this will come. And in Chennai and all the Chief, the Honorable Chief Justice, maybe maximum one year he will stay. And uh, so they will be so close to, I mean, not that they are any biased or anything, but they know that uh, ASG is very brilliant. And who is the other person opposing him? Is the party in person. Oh, this fellow, don't mind thing. Like that. You know, it's an impression, it's created. Rightly so. Rightly so. Second, uh, second point is that is you should know that a judge should know that you have some knowledge. Otherwise, you're a waste of time of the court. Yeah. You're wasting the time of the court. So you have to be extremely careful. You have to be well prepared to the best of your abilities. It is possible. Everything is available on the internet. But you should know how to. What is your case? So here my case is this, main case is, I am an advocate. I am a chartered accountant. That is the first condition, one. Second, you should exam all those conditions and then I am selected as a resolution professor. That means I am like a PhD being compared with an MSc or even become correct now now when i'm already a person of that uh, after thorough scrutiny why are you making it more rigid uncalled for when uh, the lawyers don't do that lawyers doesn't have it lawyers also great profession Integrity, every profession is tested against integrity, honesty. Otherwise, you cannot be in the business. And there are enough penal laws. So, you are treating a PhD less than a BCom. That is my case. Equality, because this is a business legislation. And therefore, I have to challenge uh, the arbitrariness. That's the basic subject. Other things, okay, subordinate legislation, 
uh, how CA institute, uh, section 8 company is given such a sweeping powers. That is, if you are rejected, you know, AFA, rejection can take place. In my case, what happened? They have rejected and never informed. After eight, eight months only, they have informed. Why they have rejected? They said, I have not paid the fees. Then I showed them I paid the fees. So it's an error of judgment on their part. Point one. That means they had accounting problem they were telling. They don't have proper infrastructure. IBBI, uh, IIIP at least resourceful. IBBI, whatever we are paying is uh, for salaries of the uh, officials who are transferred from various departments. So this is point one. They have rejected when I have not paid the fees. I paid the fees, but they thought it. And uh, that was the problem. That means, the, but this may not be tested because law is different. What I'm saying, IBBI doesn't have infrastructure, IBBI, that is correctable. But then legally, why you want to have that? Now, IBBI, what has done is, if you see even now, they are projecting themselves as a very strong organization. Ruthlessly uh, strong like that. Simple question is, they take uh, quarterly reports, all, but they don't even read it. <coughs> they don't read anything. They don't publish the white paper on many things. Why there is a, a, a more than two years delay, 95% cuts. And uh, what is the remedy? You are supposed to be in charge, but no, they have not done anything. But what they are doing is they are punishing a member and then imposing heavy costs, calling the media, and then informing them. So, courts actually, if you see, if you challenge IBBI, a, a case comes, judges and all think IBBI is very good. There is two problems we are facing. The judges know um, high court and all, with due respect. The cases are, per day, 100 cases they have to adjudicate. This is coming for admission. And when the matter comes, that is, I'm talking about the decisions of IPBI, they're coming for admission. So the judges will think, uh, this fellow would have RP means he's uh, making money. And uh, that's why the IPBI has taken action. And therefore, uh, let's not give stay. Let's not give stay. In now, uh, we'll discuss ours together. So generally, they avoid giving stay because IPBI created that impact, but actually they don't follow rules, regulations and all in punishing the members because that is the oxygen by which they are uh, continuing. If you see my cases, it will be just like that and many chartered accountants, cast, they are suffering because once the case goes to them, a complaint, you are finished. You are finished because the people sitting there with a uh, revenge uh, attack, they will do. They believe. Before the case comes itself, they will believe that uh, this fellow is a thief. But they never solve the problems of the person. Your fees is not received. Years that you are working. It's a business legislation. We are using somebody's money. Anybody will file case. Anybody can file case against you. It's like a father and son. So son is so seen smoking. Then father will call and tell him, why do you smoke? Uh, stop it. But he may be smoking 10 days, many times. But suppose once in a way he is smoking and is caught, some can tell. But IBPI, ah, oh, you smoke, finished. The impact analysis is not being done. And another problem we are facing is the advocates will like to win the case and leave it and then go. Away. But then the impact analysis, why the nation has lost so much of money, it's because of them only. Ah, that will come. So the entire crisis, no, you can uh, subordinate legislation, excessive delegation, malified intention, manifestly arbitrary, all are there. But then when you come to the court, you are supposed to be sure. So what happened is, one way is, uh, five to ten points you take and you go on and argue. That will not remember what you are arguing. And secondly, you must see how the opponent ASG handles the issue. In my case, 
the honorable asg <clears throat> he didn't even uh, first uh, petition he didn't speak anything and uh, then i was speaking everything arguments arguments and all he kept quiet he didn't say anything and said some things and all and uh, the the matter came before honorable sahi bench uh, justice chief justice sahi and uh, sendil ramurthy sir he is brilliant uh, sendil ramurthy <clears throat> he was able to grasp the points but what happened the asg in the last minute he filed a notes of submission he thought submitting a copy to and in that notes of submissions he submitted only the judgment of sampad ganesh was union of india sampad ganesh was a union of india and uh, he gave that thing so what happened <clears throat> sampad ganesh and union of india that case was is not this uh, related to this this is what i am challenging is totally different whether nefra and icai can parallelly uh, act, act upon not even parallelly when icai is there why nefra that was the case and even in that judgment of bombay high court division bench they wrote no no the parliament would never would have thought on the same offense two parallel proceedings it is never the intention of the parliament that is the judgment in that but they appealed the decision that in this case icai is for uh, up to 500 crores and below the disciplinary case they can go above 500 only nefra will come into the picture national financial reporting authority that was the judgment but then uh, the asg planned it like that so the judgment uh, was given they are they are recorded everything <clears throat> finally the point raised by me was never discussed what is my point that is the equality concept the equality it is violation of uh, arbitrary manifestly arbitrary so what did i say when you, you are a phd insolvency professional is like a phd whereas lawyers tcas and all like msc mcom or bcom now you should have had conditions for these people not for that man why are you having them that's all that's my case you mean to say insolvency was a thief that means others are not what is the purpose everybody is to be integrity you know you are taking clients uh, lawyer is handling so many so that is lost in the first page next is excessive legislation all those things are manifest arbitrary other things have come so what i learned from this is this uh, this point is discussed dear friends so last minute this is one thing asg will do suddenly they will not file any uh, written rejoinder nothing they will file and suddenly they will already chief justice would have been interacting with him actually later i came to know me the asg sir shankar narayan sir wrote a very beautiful uh, kavide on uh, the honorable justice sahi in the farewell function sahi sir was telling what a beautiful poet he uh, is like keats or uh, like that he was telling. so i have that much relation where am i i am good for nothing and uh, secondly anyway it will be dismissed let me put it like this but still you have to be guarded you make your point clear for supreme court so that is what that was my uh, honorable prakash kumar sir president of nclt he was telling me whenever you prepare you have to go up to supreme court don't worry about anything else you lose lose when you come to a court and lose in a high court there may be 10 points you would have agitated and the court would have a uh, challenge on two points will so the number of points for agitation would have come down to two and thereafter you can go to supreme, supreme court uh, not that others these people are all going to supreme court but 
Very good. Very good. Excellent knowledge. Two minutes they will come to the issue. And they will stick to that. I will tell you why. So therefore, first lesson number one from this experience is one. Before you start, we believe that you will be losing it. It is a question. Surely you are going to be, the case will be dismissed. Point number one. The case will come before the Chief Justice, Honorable Chief Justice Bench, too. And then ASG will be the other side. Ministry of Union, uh, Corporate Affairs Union of India will be appearing. And they have more knowledge, more tricks and more uh, things. Uh, to, they have to win the case. That's why they are taken. When a lawyer is taken and paid 5 lakhs, it's not just that he is going to say 1 plus 1 is 3. No, he will not tell. He will tell 1 plus 1 is he saying 3 and saying 2 and then get the case 1. So you have to be careful. <clears throat> but Supreme Court doesn't happen. If you are able to follow a point of law, strictly you sit on the point of law and then tell the case will be closed. Uh, that is the point. I'll give you a brief. That means Bombay High Court Division Bench relied on this judgment which is a per incurium judgment constitutional. If they have not even considered that point. So they are telling that the entire architecture is there. This is a policy decision. And uh, one is, this is a policy decision. Then uh, the insolvency professional is running a company and therefore he needs much better controls, uh, strict guarding, like that. That means the others are uh, not required. And uh, excessive legislation, no, no, it is all right. Triple uh, IPA is there. It is established on that thing. For everything they wrote, man, all judgments. But they relied on judgment on Sampath Ganesh, which is in my favor, not in their favor. Same judgment. Understand? So what I should have done is I should have done a review. Filed a review petition. I did not do that because I thought, let them, some more mistakes, let the IEBI do. Then we will go up to Supreme Court. Here next edition also you will lose. That I am very clear. That is what I felt. So that is the 13 to 29 of 20. I will read out the judgment their friends and I will go detailedly what they have done. But ultimately, what is that section regulation 7A? Why do you need it? it? That regulation is tested against the manifestly arbitrary. It is in violation of Article 14 of our Constitution. That's all. How do you say it is manifestly arbitrary? Now you are treating equality concept is affected. You are treating uh, PhD as become. That's all. That is the case. Other things are subordinate legislation, excessive legislation, and they, they may not withstand much. You understand this? Everybody will go. Subordinate legislation will be challenged as we discussed the previous thing. But then that is uh, ultra virus to this thing. See, in a judicial review, they are testing the virus of legislation. Means uh, the act is made. Is it in violation of the Article 14 of the Article Fundamental Rights? And you have to establish extremely well. <clears throat> So that is the base we were with you. Second, you must know how the case will go through before the Chief Justice bench only. Why does the Chief Justice bench? And second, third is Advocate Solicitor General. Fourth is good for nothing party in person. Your advocate also you're a party in person only because you're an affected party. And finally, the jurisprudence of uh, testing the virus of legislation is very clear that they will not uh, uh, quash the act of parliament because of the concept of doctrine of separation of powers. Uh, the, uh, of the, like, you know, Justice Muralidhar and Justice uh, Ramasubramanian, uh, Justice Abhay Oka, and uh, they are uh, very good. I mean, not that others are also, everybody's good, but they are ready to, they themselves have very good knowledge. You are not going to supplement them. You tell the facts of the case, they will tell you the answer. And uh, 
of course all of this in ja gangapur jaipur wala also who heard the next one fantastic judges all are very good but this calls for only up to the level of supreme court so you prepare yourself for honorable supreme court so now we will go to the next uh, read petition petition is dismissed i am going to read out 1329 and now even the um, yeah, it is there in the website of ibbi as if it's a great achievement actually it's a per incurium judgment so i have not challenged it uh, for review because i was waiting for the regulation 23a has to be tested there is another regulation sweeping powers are given to ibbi and they are exercising those powers in order to protect their because nobody in the media will ever write anything and uh, they are only telling uh, the uh, adjudication in nclt is bad in 900 days it is taking place then what is the reason what is the research you have done have you published a white paper on that can you say even nclt ncl at is governed by subordinate legislation executive only the mca appoint the judges adjudicating authorities on the other side honorable supreme court law judges supreme court is telling that they are not functioning well rampant misuse of judicial power so what is the answer from ibb or nothing they are only worried about then secondly the public sector banks 16 lakh crores we have lost who has lost risk the only public sector banks private sector banks they recover all the money then what is the reason then what is the reason have you filed a paper then they will say no no we are not able to regulate the public sector banks then we'll bring the rbi which is the regulator into the system and prepare the modus of operation bring them into a to amenable to when nclt now there is a lot of discussion uh, generated because of honorable justice sudresh sir wanting that to merge them to bring uh, more benches in high court that will be more good undoubtedly it is going to do good right now friends the third video we are going to take up continued discussion okay.